The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture is continuing the Year of Culture by launching several carnival initiatives, as well as its new magazine and a new TV show called Run Come See. The Year of Culture is designed to celebrate the nation's rich history through art, music and other expressions. And as preparations continue for the first Junkanoo Carnival Parade, Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Dr. Daniel Johnson gave an update on the arrangements. All the preparations are in full gear now. Uh, we're in a countdown. We have six months to go. Um, all the international press is coming together. But locally, I think we've done all the groundwork, all the infrastructure is in place. Um, we're now launching what we call the brand. And this is, once again, I told people, not just Carnival. It is a branch of our entire art and culture product into a year-round, fierce destination product that will last and love and become the envy of the entire world. Festival Commission member Robert Sandy Sands offered his views on the support the carnival has been getting. We also he also gave us some insight into what can be expected in the months ahead. We have two big events that are scheduled for November uh, this coming month. First of all, the launching of our website and secondly the launching of our CD, which is a compilation of all of a number of the songs in our song competition. I also understand that there are about 35 bands that have registered thus far. Were you surprised that there was such a, I guess, enthusiastic response to the carnival? Not surprised, but very encouraged. And uh, we believe that at the end of the day, uh, there will be more. What is important that this is not a Nassau-centric event. Uh, we have events that will be going on in Grand Bahama and throughout some of the family islands as well. Well, you may see her every evening on the Bahamas tonight, and we get to see her just about every day. Janae Noel Ferguson was recognized as employee of the quarter here at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Mrs. Noel Ferguson joins our Quincy Jones over at the Northern Service, who also took home the prestigious award. On hand to salute Janae and Quincy were senior executive managers and fellow staff members. When one of us hurt, when one of us come under attack, you attack us all, but there are ways of dealing with the attack. Yeah. And so we uplift Quincy and Freeport, and we uplift Jenea. And we ask and pray, we ask and, 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 and we ask all of you to continue to pray for each other, okay? I want to congratulate both of you for uh, your peers honoring you. And anytime your peers honor you, that means you are special. This didn't come from management, this came from your peers. So we want to honor both of you, and I pray that this would be an example that all of us will strive to become employed and have that special pocket. Your colleagues for their support. Never do it alone. Our job in news is very difficult at times. Sometimes we come under attack, but at the end of the day, we do it all for the betterment of the product, and that's one thing I want all of us here to know and, and, and to strive, strive to be the best at all times. So to everyone, thank you so much, and the prize money will not be shared. So no breakfast on Monday, Jenea. Bummer. <laughs> so glad she would share. Yeah, well, congratulations. congratulations. In its push to educate all Bahamians before a new date is set for the constitutional referendum, members of the Public Education Committee of the Constitutional Commission headed to Long Island Thursday to address residents there. It was the first of two meetings to take place. RCS Adderley has more. The Constitutional Commission's public education campaign taking an interactive approach in its first presentation to Long Islanders on Thursday evening. They explained each bill by using a model and it's an approach that seemed to work with attendees. Your first forum on this, I think, was in College of Bahamas and you all came a long way. It's a lot of change and you explained it much clearer tonight. As it stands, the Bahamas is one of 27 countries that still discriminates against men and women. The four proposed constitutional bills is seeking to address that issue. Of the Western countries, the two or three that are mentioned are the Bahamas, Barbados, and Kiribati. I understand that both Barbados and Kiribati have started their process to bring equality and that ability to transmit citizenship. The Bahamas has yet to do it. Now what sort of company are we keeping? We've got to really look at some of these issues. I am absolutely horrified that we are being lumped 
in the same category as some of the names on this list. If you uh, were a devious, evil um, correspondent from America, for instance, and you wanted to have a go at the Bahamas, you could really hurt us with this sort of thing. So I think for that alone, we should really get the playing field level so that we can hold our, our head up and our hand up and say, not us. In her presentation, committee member Brandis Duncanson underscored the importance of these amendments through a simple demonstration. Imagine now if Madam Administrator was an unmarried Bahamian man who had this lovely gentleman outside of marriage. He would not be a Bahamian at birth. However, Mr. Lightborn, a Bahamian, married Bahamian man, his daughter is automatically a Bahamian at birth. So you see the discrimination even across the sexes. But at the end of the day, we're all Bahamians. Now, following Thursday's meeting in Clarence Town, the committee is headed over to Sims Primary School to host its second meeting. We'll have the details of that meeting in tomorrow's newscast. From Clarence Town, Long Island, C.S. Scatterly, ZNS Network News.